गुड इवनिंग एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू द ब्लैक होल दोस्तों आज हमारी गुफ्तु का उनवान है द ड्यूरेंट लाइन हिस्टोरिकल पोलिटिकल एंड लीगल परस्पेक्टिव सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज द एग्रीमेंट मेड इन एटीन नाइन्टी थ्री बिटवीन अफगानिस्तान अंडर अमीर अब्दुलरहमान एंड ब्रिटिश इंडियन गवर्नमेंट एंड वी विल डिस्कस वेदर इट वॉज साइंड अंडर ड्यूरस और डज इट होल्ड हिस्टोरिकल एंड लीगल मेरिट सो आप एक्सपेक्ट कर सकते हैं आज के एक बड़ी कॉम्प्लेक्स वेब होगी डिस्कशन में अबाउट क्लेम्स काउंटर क्लेम्स एंड जियो पोलिटिकल इम्प्लिकेशन जहरा सराउंडिंग द ड्यूर एंड लाइन एंड वी एक्सपेक्ट के आज गुफ्तु में जो अवेलेबल प्राइमरी या जो अथेंटिक सेकेंडरी सोर्सेज हैं गुफ्तु उनके गिरद घूमें ताकि इसकी एक अच्छी क्रेडिबिलिटी भी हो वी आर वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू आर स्पीकर वी हैव डॉक्टर हमायतुल्ला याकूबी विद अस आप मेरे दाई जानब जो हैं जलवा फरोज़ हैं ही हैड बीन आर रिसर्च फेलो एट एन आई एच सी आर दैट इज़ नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हिस्टोरिकल एंड कल्चरल रिसर्च कायद अजम यूनिवर्सिटी फ्राम टू थाउजेंड सिक्स टू टू थाउजेंड सेवनटीन प्रजेंटली ही इज़ असटेंट प्रोफेसर एट द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हिस्ट्री कायद अजम यूनिवर्सिटी इस्लामाबाद में मोर ओवर ही हैज़ आल्सो ऑथर्ड अ बुक टाइटल्ड मुगल अफगान रिलेशन इन साउथ एशिया हिस्ट्री एंड डिवेलपमेंट्स जो कि 2015 में शाया हुई आप सब लोगों की आमद का शुक्रिया और प्लीज़ एक छोटी सी जहमत कीजिए और अपने सेल फोन जो हैं वो आप साइलेंट मोड में कर दें सो दैट देर इज़ नो डिंग डोंग नो डिस्ट्रेक्शन मोर ओवर वैन द हाउस इज़ ओपन फॉर क्यू एंड डे आप इस गुफ्तु में शर्क हो सकते हैं जो आपका नुक़ नज़र हो जो आपका तबसरा हो यू आर मोस्ट वेलकम जस्ट एक चीज़ का ख्याल रखिएगा कि पहले आप अपना हाथ बुलंद कीजिएगा ताकि आपको माइक्रोफोन दे दिया जाए सो so दैट आपको ऑनलाइन जो हमारे देखने वाले अहबाब हैं वो भी सुन सकें बस यही दो तीन बातें थी नाउ लेडीज एंड लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन प्लीज़ वेलकम डॉक्टर हमायतुल्ला याकूबी थैंक यू थैंक यू नाक सो अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू as you know the topic of our today discussion uh, is uh, different line it's uh, historical legal and political uh, perspectives and why i selected this topic in the current scenario it is because uh, uh, the deputy foreign minister of afghanistan the current deputy foreign minister mohammad abbas tanakze he recently has given a statement Uh, that uh, we don't accept different line and it is a controversy between the t the two uh, neighboring states of pakistan and afghanistan although uh, the pakistani foreign ministry repudiated his claim but i felt at that time deemed that why not i should talk on this very important issue and to discuss that uh, whether uh this is a controversial uh a controversy between the two states of afghanistan and pakistan and what were those uh, uh reasons due to which afghanistan claimed that it is a controversial boundary between uh, the two state uh, uh there are three reasons due to which afghanistan uh, uh claimed that uh, uh the different line is not a valid boundary between afghanistan and pakistan uh, number one that the territories between west of uh, the river indus once it was a part and parcel of the big afghan empire and these territories were captured by ahmad shah abdali this this is the first reason the second reason is that the different line it was signed under duress it was signed because british indian government forcefully he uh, was uh, forced to sign that agreement because uh, uh, amir abdur rahman he was also a puppet in the hands of british indian government that's why he was compelled and he signed that agreement under duress the third reason is that Uh, an ethnic linguistic and geographical consideration that since uh, most of people of NW, former nwfp 
they are pakhtun that's why ethnically these areas not only areas but these people also are ethnically the same culturally linguistically and we have uh, uh, one religion that's why uh, uh, we don't accept different line as the valid boundary between afghanistan and pakistan now pakistan repudiates all these claims to be very much brief the claim of pakistan is that the territory between devran line and river indus it was a part of big afghan empire for a very brief time period of 60 years when ahmed shah abdali he captured all these areas uh, even in his lifetime uh, some of these areas were captured by the sikh ranjit singh so uh, this claim of afghanistan is not uh, valid the second uh, uh, argument of pakistan is that uh, amir abdur rahman never signed it under duress he was not forced and this agreement was like uh, according to the international norms according to the international norms of give and take table talks were held and at the end in 1893 this agreement was signed the third claim of pakistan is that the people of former nwfp ex tribal areas and the adjacent areas of balochistan they uh, uh, joined pakistan in a democratic process in a democratic manner so in this talk i will discuss all uh, uh, these thing that whether it is legal or otherwise and whether it was signed under duress or not so first we will discuss the great game that what is the great game and how it affected political situation of this uh, region you know about the great game the great game it was between tsarist russia and british empire and afghanistan at that time it was regarded a buffer state between the two mighty empires uh, the, the great game it has been uh, discussed by a number of scholars uh, uh, and since we are running short of time it is impossible for me uh, to be uh, you know to discuss in detail however at that time uh, when the great game uh, started tsarist russia it started occupying central asian modern central asian states one by one and in early 1870s and 1880s russia it you know reached up to morf samarkand tashkent bukhara all these modern states have been occupied by nazarist russia and here from indian side british it occupied punjab in 1848 49 the sikh empire it was eliminated and you know it reached up to the border of uh, uh, afghanistan tribal areas since nwfp it was a part of punjab at that time it was created in 1909 so uh, uh, there was confusion and chaos about uh, the proper boundary line not only for russia over there for iran it was also a problem for china it was also a, pro a problem and for afghanistan itself it was a pro problem and the need was to fix its geographical border so for that matter it was in 1884 that a joint anglo russo commission was constituted in 1884 and the task of that commission was to fix border between tsarist russia and afghanistan on the one side between afghanistan and iran on the other side and afghanistan and china and the final protocol of all these arrangements were signed in 1887 so this commission you know fixed the border between all these countries with afghanistan and interestingly in all these negotiation when the borders of afghanistan with these countries uh, it was in the process the amir of afghanistan 
war, was neither informed nor consulted. It was completely, you know, negotiation between British India, Tsarist Russia. And this commission fixed the border between Afghanistan and uh, uh, Russia, the river Amu. It was declared as border between these two states. Then uh, 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 Iran and Afghanistan. So Herat was given to Afghanistan because uh, uh, it is long ago and even Persia, it captured Herat and some other adjacent areas when Amir Dost Muhammad Khan, he was the ruler of Afghanistan. And it was openly with the assistance and with the help of Russia. That's why then Amir Dost Muhammad Khan, he was deposed and a tripartite alliance was you know, created between uh, uh, Ranjit Singh, then British Indian Empire and Shah Shuja. Shah Shuja he, when he was banished by the Afghans, he took shelter with Ranjit Singh. And all you know that how he was treated over, over there, how the Kohinoor, you know, a diamond, it was snatched from him by Ranjit Singh. So when the British realized that now Amir Dosmamat Khan, he, you know, is closing towards Russia, then this alliance was created and Amir Dosmamat Khan, again, he was deposed. But one important uh, uh, development took place in 1855, and that development is about the Treaty of Peshawar. 1855, Treaty of Peshawar was between British Indian Empire and Amir Dost Muhammad Khan. Since Dost Muhammad Khan, he was entrusted to regain the territory of Peshawar, Mardan, and you know, uh, Deir Esmail Khan, because all these areas were taken away by the Sikh from the Afghans. But at that time, he wrote a letter to Lord Lytton, the then Viceroy of uh, British Indian Empire. And he sought his assistance from British government to recapture these territories. But since Ranjit Singh, he was uh, the, the, uh, the friend of uh, the Britisher at that time, they signed treaty of Amritsar due to which Raiwar Sutlaj, it was regarded a border between British Empire, Indian Empire and the uh, Sikh Empire. At that time, they did not give any help to Amir Dost Muhammad Khan. But after some time, when, when he, he, he went closer towards Russia, then he was deposed and Shah Shuja again, he was uh, 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 installed on the throne of Kabul. So he again became the, the king of Afghanistan. But Shah Shuja, he also failed to fulfill the, 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 the demands or uh, you know, uh, some other task and some other plannings of the uh, Britisher. So it was after the second Anglo-Afghan war that Amir Abdul Rahman, he was installed as the king of Afghanistan, as the Amir of Afghanistan. So at that time, all these arrangements were took place. The borders were fixed between, on the one side, Tsarist Russia and Afghanistan, China and Afghanistan, and Iran and Afghanistan. And I mentioned that Afghanistan was never a part in these negotiations. Afghanistan was never consulted. And interestingly, if you Google the current map of Afghanistan, you will find that like Devran line, the border between Russia and Afghanistan also divided Tajik, Uzbek, Turkmen, and other communities, other nationalities, other ethnic groups. And from the side of India, same happened over there, that the Shia community, the Shia Muslims, and the, uh, the Baloch, they were divided also, you know, on that side. So when these borders were fixed, so Amir Abdul Rahman, he felt the need that why should I, not, I, 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 I uh, should not fix my borders towards British India? Because this border was problematic. 
You know, there were tribal uprising at that time against the British government in these areas. And, you know, uh, uh, this, th th this, this, you know, uh, delimitation of the border, it created not only problems for British India, but also for Amir Abdul Rahman. So what he did, he did a letter to the then Viceroy of India, Lord Dufresne, and he requested British India to fix my border with the British Indian Empire. Lord Dufresne, he was, uh, you know, uh, like uh, 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 an aggressive, he was in aggressive mood at that time, and uh, uh, you go through the autobiography of Amir Abdul Rahman. I quote, having settled my boundaries with all my other neighbors, Persia, China, and Russia, I thought it necessary to set out the boundaries between my country and India so that the boundary line should be definitely marked out around my dominions as a strong wall of protection. I take this, uh, this uh, you know, paragraph from uh, the autobiography of Amir Abdul Rahman. And the British Indian authorities, they were looking for such an opportunity to delimit, to fix the border between the two uh, countries. But what happened at that time, that uh, a Hazara leader, Muhammad Ishaq by name, he created troubles for Amir Abdul Rahman in Afghanistan. So this you know, negotiation were delayed for some time. Then some other troubles were created in Afghanistan for uh, uh, Amir Abdul Rahman. Under these circumstances, Lord uh, Defren, he requested Amir Abdul Rahman that due to chaotic situation in your country, it will be better that you should visit India, you should visit Raul Pendi, over there we will start negotiation about this long-standing issue. However, apparently due, due to his ailing health and the rebellion of Muhammad Ishaq at that time, you know, again delayed these negotiations. During this time period, British government started mega projects, not only in uh, uh, northwestern frontier areas, but also in Quetta and uh, uh, Kojak Hill, Kojak Hill Tunnel, it was uh, uh, started, the construction work was started over there. Then uh, the railway track, it was, you know, uh, spread and it was reached towards Quetta, which also created, you know, differences between British Indian government and Amir Abdul Rahman. Then, at that time, a number of uh, uh, the tribal leaders also rebelled against the British Indian government. So all these things delayed the, 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 uh, the negotiation process. This was the situation. Amir was also not feeling well at that time. So when Viceroy Lord Lansdowne, when he became the Viceroy of India, he also followed an aggressive policy, forward policy, towards tribal areas and towards Afghanistan. And he was of the view that we should capture more areas uh, of Afghanistan. He was, you know, very much aggressive towards Afghanistan. However, uh, he was also uh, uh, taking interest to start negotiation with Amir Abdul Rahman. And at that time, he sent General Robert. General Robert, he was sent to start negotiation about the fixation of border between the two states. Now General Robert, he was the commander of that army who defeated Afghanistan in the second Anglo-Afghan wars. He was a military commander. He was not a civilian. And this was very much difficult for Amir Abdul Rahman to start negotiation with a military commander. And such a military commander who has defeated 
recently Afghanistan in the uh, second Anglo-Afghan war. That's why he at that time excused again uh, that I am ill and I am not in the position to start negotiation uh, uh, for the delimitation of border. اس نے جو ہے وہ اس وجہ سے دوبارہ اس مذاکرات کو جو ہے وہ ڈیلے کیا سو لینس ڈاؤن ہی واز ویل اویئر آف دس فیکٹ دین ہی سینٹ موتمر ڈیورینٹ ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم ہی واز دا فارن سیکرٹری آف دا برٹش انڈین امپائر ہی واز اے سویلین اینڈ وین ہی ریچڈ کابل امیر عبد الرحمان ہی اسٹارٹیڈ نیگوسیشن وتھ دس پرسن Now, I will talk about little bit about the Muzakirat, the, the negotiation, that what actually took place uh, uh, during uh, the table talk. During the negotiation, the first thing which came under discussion was the question of the area of Asmar. It is situated alongside border between the two states. And due to its strategic importance for Afghanistan, the Amir insisted at that time that I will keep Asmar with Afghanistan and British government it also demanded that uh, Asmar should be given to the British Indian Empire. In return for it, British government claimed Bajawal, Deer, Swat and all these areas. So this issue was settled down. Asmar was given to Afghanistan and these areas were given to the British government. In the same manner, the Amir relinquished his right to the rest of Waziristan in return for Birmal tract. And this is all that was going on. This is the table on a table. This is the negotiation. Likewise, Amir also surrendered his claim over Chagi and New Chaman in favor of British India. Then, uh, you know, although at that time, Kalat state was there, then uh, the, the, the British government failed to start or to involve the ruler of Kalat in all these negotiations. So the, the agreement, it was concluded according to the norms of table talk, give and take, the whole arrangement was formalized and then it was signed at 12th November 1893 in Kabul. Then what the Amir did the next day on 13th November 1893, the Amir received the mission in formal darbar in his court of Kabul. And all uh, the leading tribal chiefs, military commanders, they were uh, present on the occasion. So to endorse the contents of the agreement, Mir Abdul Rahman then convened a jarga, which is a traditional council of elders, not only in Afghanistan, but also in uh, uh, Pakistan. And it was like a lawyer jarga. Interestingly, in his speech, to the lawyer jarga, he pointed out to all these dignitaries that the interests of Afghanistan and Britain, uh, the British government were identical and that the British had no evil designs against Afghanistan. He delivered a speech at that time and I quote a paragraph. It was for the first time that Afghanistan had a definite frontier which would prevent future misunderstanding and would render Afghanistan strong and powerful. And I will be in a better position to start the process of reforms in various fields, in the field of administration, in uh, 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 military reforms he started. And he also started uh, 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 land reforms over there in Afghanistan. And he deemed it fit to you know, start a process of reformation without uh, the delimitation of border, it was something impossible for Amir Abdurrahman to start a bigger 
or a Uyghur process of reformation in Afghanistan. And this is, uh, you know, he mentioned in his autobiography that this is a great basis for progress and fees for my successor. And on this score, they will have no occasion to trouble themselves with the neighboring state, the British India. Amir Abdurrahman, he uh, uh, accepted this agreement and he legalized this agreement. Or I, I referred to the Peshawar Agreement of 1855. In Peshawar agreement, Amir Dost Muhammad Khan, he at that time relinquished his claim on Peshawar. And Peshawar, it was already given to the British Indian Empire. So this agreement, to me, this agreement formalized the already arrangement, the already informal arrangement, it was formalized. And in a way, this is like the transfer, in Tekal. Usne jo hai wo British government ke naam is pure alake ka jo hai wo intikal kar diya. Ab Afghanistan ke jo, jo teen claim hai ke ye hum bilkul uh, accept hi nahi karte. Pakistan uh, expects that uh, since the Taliban, they are much closer to the government of Pakistan, especially uh, uh, to our establishment. So it expects the Taliban will uh, uh, accept different line agreement. However, like uh, Hamid Karzai and Ashraf Ghani government, the Taliban, they adopted a hard line attitude on this issue also. And in their previous tenure, when they were the rulers of Afghanistan, at that time they also demonstrated, you, you know, uh, their unwillingness to accept this uh, border between the two states. Now, the question is, what is the legal status? of different line, whether the claim of, 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 of Afghanistan is true or otherwise. So I would discuss the legal status of the different line agreement, but, you know, uh, in two part, before 1947 and after 1947. So before 1947, Afghanistan, it accepted Deverand line. Not only Amir Abdurrahman accepted this Deverand line, but after the death of Amir Abdurrahman, his successor, uh, I am you know, sk skipping the details. His successor, Amir Habibullah Khan, in 1905, accepted and ratified this agreement. Afterward, King Amanullah Khan, in the Treaty of Peace of Raul Pendi of November 1919, he ratified this act, this agreement, and accepted it. Then the Anglo-Afghan Treaty of 1921, it also, you know, accepted this agreement. And then a trade convention was held between British Indian government and Afghanistan. It was held in Kabul in 1923. And lastly, King Nadir Shah in 1930, in all these... Uh, you know, uh, Tenever, under various Amirs of Afghanistan, they never made different line controversial before 1947. And I will say that after Istiklal, when the foreign policy of Afghanistan became independent, after the third Anglo-Afghan war, when Afghanistan was practically became an independent country, Afghanistan never uh, uh, made this uh, uh, agreement controversial. So this is the situation that even Nadar Shah, he also accepted this agreement between British India and uh, government of Afghanistan. Now what happened after 1947 when the 3rd June plane, it came into the limelight. You know about uh, 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 much more information that what actually happened in former NWFP, you know about the Pakhtunistan issue, the Pakhtunistan, uh, uh, you know, resolution, it was uh, passed in Bannu at that time by uh, Congress, Hudai Khidmatgar, and all these leading figures, they participated at that time in uh, this uh, Bannu uh, resolution. So it 
you know, created troubles not only for Pakistan. And the government of uh, Afghanistan then claimed that all the territories west of the river Indus should be handed over to Afghanistan. And they claimed that since all these territories once belong to greater Afghanistan, so these are our legal dominions. And since the Pakhtuns, they are living in these areas, that's why they also wished to be included in uh, 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 Afghanistan. But at that time, the British Indian government and the, uh, the government of Great Britain made it very much clear to Afghanistan that Afghanistan should not claim anything which was formalized under the 1893 agreement. And this was you know, clearly mentioned in the third June plane that uh, the successor authorities, means India and Pakistan, they will inherit all those agreements, all those arrangements, all those protocol, which were once signed by the British Indian government. So over there, the successor authority was India, and here the successor authority, it was Pakistan. So Pakistan inherited different line agreement. Pakistan inherited troubles also and advantages also. So to, 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 to make these things very much clear, at that time, the British Foreign Secretary, Noble Baker, he uh, delivered a speech in the House of Common. Uh, it was on June 30, 1950, when the Pakistan issue it uh, uh, resurfaced. I quote in, uh, his, from his speech that it is His Majesty's government view that Pakistan is in the international law the inheritor of the rights and duties of the old government of India. And British government support the claim of Pakistan as far as this different line controversy is concerned. Now, this was the stated and the formal position of the British government. Now, what is the position of borders in the Vienna Convention? Vienna Convention, it is an international convention and every government except Vienna Convention. This is very much clear in the Article 62 of the Vienna Convention regarding the law of treaties, especially those treaties which have been, you know, uh, assigned during colonial days. Or colonialism, it was not only in South Asia, it was in Africa, it was in the Middle East, it was everywhere at that time. Colonialism, it was ended after the Second World War. So what Vienna Convention uh, talked about uh, uh, law of treaties. It is, it is accepted by all that whenever a new state of country is carved out of an existing colonial domain, all international agreements and undertakings that the previous rulers of the regions had entered into are transferred to the new independent authorities, new independent nationalities. So this is the stated position of Vienna Convention. Isi tara, about the legal position of the Devran line and the approach of the international community towards such issues. This is not the only issue in uh, the globe. There were also such issues between Burkina Faso and Republic of Mali. And such issues erupted between uh, uh, Yugoslavia, Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina. And in all these cases, international court of law, or international jo, uh, 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 court of law, hai. All these, in all these cases, uh, uh, cases, the verdict was given according to the norms of the Vienna Convention. Not a single border was disturbed in all these cases. And if 
you look at the map, even, uh, particularly in Africa, which border to bilkul, isi tara bilkul straight line mein jo hai, ye colonial door mein, to baaz log kehte hain ki wahan pe chunki abadi nahi thi, or there was no controversy. However, uh, International Court of Justice also retained all these uh, cases. Now, Article 11 uh, of the Vienna Convention on Succession of Treaties, a successor state cannot as such affect a boundary obligations and right established by a treaty. Even if a treaty is null and wide, there is no law to disturb the existing boundary between the two states. Now, this is, uh, you know, the, st the, the, the international stated position under uh, 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 Vienna Convention. And it was in 1946 that non-aligned movement, you know about the non-aligned movement. The non-aligned nation on October 10, 1947, they pledged themselves to respect frontiers as they existed when these states were under colonial rule. So this is the international, you know, uh, 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 stated position about borders, about treaties, and particularly, you know, I will say about uh, 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 the Devran line. So now this is the legal status of Devran line between Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan. Now let's turn about political status. You know that Khudai Khidmatgar movement, it was started in 1929 by Abdul Ghaffar Khan. He was a Pakhtun nationalist and in the British Balochistan, Abdul Samad Achakze, he also started a movement. He was also a Pakhtun uh, nationalist. <laughs> These uh, two figures, I will not quote other movements, other political figures from history during Mughal India. So this is the current history. These two sages, these two leaders, they made alliance with Indian National Congress. The orientation of their movement was directed towards India, not towards Afghanistan. They did not made, make alliance with any political party of Afghanistan. Both were given, one was given the title of Sarhadi Gandhi and the other was given the title of Baloch Gandhi, although Abdul Samad he was not a Baloch. But due to his, uh, you know, uh, uh, his movement, uh, 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 it was in Balochistan, he was given this title. So the orientation, the political orientation of the people who are living on the eastern side of the Lion, not only their political orientation, their economic and financial orientation, their social orientation, they were before 1947, they were towards India. Although they were very much closer culturally, geographically, uh, uh, historically, linguistically towards Afghanistan. Now when Ghilzais, they established Persian Empire. The narrow center was Kandahar, Herat, all these big cities. And when Ahmad Shah Abdali, he established modern Af uh, Afghanistan, the narrow center were, were, were all these uh, uh, areas. So politically, economically, the people living on the eastern side, they were more, you know, uh, uh, interested to have their political economic fortune in the Indian subcontinent towards, you know, eastern side, not towards western side. And in history, only one instance is there when people, they migrated towards Afghanistan and it was a disaster during Hijrat days. This is like historical natural flow from, from Central Asia, from Afghanistan towards subcontinent. So some of the theologians, they issued fatwa 
that India is Darul Harb and Afghanistan is Darul Islam. So this was a disaster and they sold out their properties on very cheap prices. Hundred and thousands were killed and then Afghanistan, it was unable to provide shelter, to provide food to these people. So it was, uh, uh, it, it met, met with uh, uh, failure. Once, I will also quote uh, Sher Shah Suri. Sher Shah Suri, ek dafa, apne court mein, kisi soch mein, jo hai, wo, uh, uh, beta hua ta, to uske, uh, jo nobles te, uh, ministers te, un logo ne unse poocha ke baad se salamat kiyo, aap aise jo hai, wo soch mein uh, gai huye, usne ka, ke meri teen jo hai, ye uh, khwaishat hai, agar wo puri ho gai, تو مجھے بہت خوشی ہوگی لیکن مجھے پتا ہے وہ پوری نہیں ہوگی ایک جو ہے وہ میں چاہتا ہوں کہ میں دیلی سے مدینہ اور مکہ شریف تک ایک روٹ بنا لوں جس طرح اس نے ہی ڈیولپٹ انفرسٹرکچر ان انڈیا یہ جو ہم قیام و توہم دیکھتے ہیں یہ اس نے جو ہے وہ بہت پہلے سرائے کاروان سرائے بنائے تھے اور اس میں مساجد بھی تھے اس میں یہ پٹشالہز بھی تھے اس میں مدارس بھی تھے اور اس میں جو ہے وہ یہ جو ایکزیکٹیو اور اسٹنگ پلیس ہے نا یہ اس نے بہت پہلے بنائے تھے اس نے کہا تھا کہ میں ایک روڈ بنانا چاہتا ہوں پھر میں چاہتا ہوں کہ ابراہیم لودی اور ظہیر الدین محمد بابر کے لیے آلی شان مقبر تعمیر کروں اور تیسرا میں چاہتا ہوں کہ یہ جو the پختونز who are living in the mountainous region to settle them in the plains areas so what was the logic of Shir Shah Suri to have these uh, uh, big projects? However, this is our argument that Shir Shah Suri, he himself migrated from Ro, his forefather, they migrated from Ro, they settled in Punjab and then they became, uh, uh, they, they revived the Afghan monarchy over there in India, although he was not a Pashto speaker. His court language was not Pashto. It was Parishian. But the Pakhtuns, we appreciate his effort. Ghani Khan says that the Behlol or the Shir Shah Khabar Aurum are the same as Pakhtanu Bad Shahan. And Khushal Khan Khatak, he also appreciated the efforts of the Lodis and uh, the Soris. So this is, you know, uh, the, 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 the historical aspects of the Devran Lion Agreement that the, uh, the people who are living in the eastern side of Devran Lion, they are more directed towards, uh, uh, towards Indian subcontinent, not towards Central Asia or towards uh, Afghanistan. And the political uh, perspective, political perspective, although some of the writers, they uh, come up with their own perspectives. However, it was in 1947 that referendum was held in NWFP. Now, uh, uh, our uh, nationalist brothers, they uh, criticizing referendum, referendum and they argued that if the fate of Punjab and Bengal, it was given to their respective provincial assemblies, then why not the NWFP assembly, assembly was given this right to decide about their future political fate? Why this was not, not given to the assembly of former NWFP? At that time, radical transformation took place, uh, particularly in NWFP and when Lord Mountbatten, he visited NWFP, he was uh, uh, greeted, he was uh, given, you know, uh, an enthusiastic reception by the Pakhtuns having black flags in their hands. And uh, uh, they, they were chanting slogans that, uh, uh, you know, in favor of uh, uh, Pakistan. And at that time, many stalwart and NWFP, they switched over from their uh, uh, previous political parties and they joined Muslim League. I will uh, uh, give you the example of 
پیپل لائک پیر آف مان کی شریف غلام محمد لنخڑ غلام حیدر شیرپاؤ دا فادر آف افتاب شیرپاؤ دن مینی ادر دے جوائن مسلم لیگ اینڈ دن ان دا پنجاب پیپل لائک میا افتخار الدین ہو واز دا ڈپٹی پارلیمنٹری لیڈر ان دا سنٹرل اسمبلی فرام دا کانگریس دے آلسو جائن مسلم لیگ اینڈ یو نو این الائنس واز کریٹڈ بٹوین آل انڈیا مسلم لیگ اینڈ دا کمیونسٹ پارٹی آف انڈیا بیکاز دا کمیونسٹ پارٹی ایٹ یو نو سپورٹڈ دا آئیڈیا آف پاکستان ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم اسپیشلی آفٹر دا سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار دیٹس وائی وائس رائے ہی ڈسائڈیڈ دیٹ ریفرینڈم شوڈ بی ہیلڈ ان این ڈبلیو ایف پی سو ان ریفرینڈم دا پیپل دے گیو دیئر ورڈکٹ ان فیور آف دا پاکستان اور اس کے بعد کیا ہوا جارج کننگم ہی واز دا گورنر آف این ڈبلیو ایف پی ہی کنوین ای میٹنگ آف دا ٹرائبل چیفز ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم اینڈ ہی مینشن ٹو دا ٹرائبل چیفز دیٹ یور ایگریمنٹس ود دا برٹش گورنمنٹ ہیز بین ٹرمینیٹڈ ناؤ ناؤ a newly established state of Pakistan came into being and you uh, the, are free to, to make arrangement with the government of Pakistan. So it was after this arrangement that uh, 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 when Qaeda Azam, he visited Peshawar in 1948, uh, uh, a jarga of the tribal chiefs, it was held and they Uh, uh, decided to join Pakistan and as a uh, uh, goodwill gesture, Qaeda Azam, he decided to withdraw forces from the border areas. And they also requested him that we should be uh, uh, administered from the center. So this arrangement was made. This is the political uh, 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 perspective of the different line that the people of Uh, uh, former NWFP, they were given whether to join, uh, right whether to, go, to join India or uh, Afgh- Pakistan. Now, what happened at that time that uh, Abdul Ghaffar Khan, Abdul Samad Achakze, uh, the Congress leadership, Zalmay Pukhtun, and Khudai Khidmatgar organization. Uh, uh, it did not participate in the referendum. Rather, it, you know, it boycotted the referendum. And they passed a resolution in Bannu. And in that resolution, they demanded independent Pakhtunistan state. But after the establishment of Pakistan, you know about the famous statement of Abdul Ghaffar Khan in the first constituent assembly that For me, Pakhtunistan is the re- renaming of NWFP. I, 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 I want to you know, uh, rename. Uh, this is my demand. So he delivered its, his speech in Lakat Ali Khan. He keenly listened to uh, uh, his uh, speech. But the controversy, it was created. Pakhtunistan controversy, it was created. Although Abdul Ghaffar Khan then he never ever uttered any anti-Pakistani speech after 1947. However, uh, uh, the establishment and uh, you know, some other section still blame Abdul Ghaffar Khan and Abdul Samad Achakzeh for all you know, their, their pre-1947 political career. So this is the, the, the uh, perspectives which I mentioned in front of you people, uh, 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 this arrangement was made and you know, this arrangement was then retained after 1947. But Afghanistan every year celebrated a day of Pukhtunistan. Kabul mein ye Pukhtunistan ka din jo hai wo har saal manate rahe. Aur mera jo hai wo apne ye jo hamare nationalist bai hai in se bhi یہ گلا ہے کہ دے نیور اڈاپٹڈ اے کلیئر کٹ پوزیشن آن ڈیورن لائن ویدر دے وانٹڈ این انڈیپینڈنٹ پختونستان اسٹیٹ اور دے وانٹڈ دیئر رائٹس 
within Pakistan, the constitutional framework of Pakistan, or they wanted a greater Afghanistan. To me, they always played politics on this very issue. They did not come up with their you know, clear stand. That's why our youth is confused about uh, 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 this issue. So this is from my side. Thank you very much for your patience and for your time. If you have any question, then, you know, it will be, I, I hope, a very uh, long discussion. सर मेरा नाम मुजीबुर रहमान है और मैं डिस्ट्रिक्ट कुरम से हूं वो डेवर एंड लाइन हमारे साथ करीब ही है मेरा क्वेश्चन यह है कि बाचाहान की जो पैदाइश है वो 1890 में है तो उस टाइम 1893 में डेवर एंड लाइन का वो माहिदा होते हैं तो उसके बाद सारे जुल्म जो होता है या या फिर अंग्रेज करते हैं तो उसकी अलायंस के लिए मतलब खुदाई खिदमतगार तो कांग्रेस के साथ करते थे तो अफगानिस्तान के साथ वो नहीं कर सकते थे और उसके बाद जो दूसरा क्वेश्चन है खुदाई खिदमतगार गवर्नमेंट खैबर पख्तनख्वा में उन्नीस सौ सैंतालीस छियालीस के इलेक्शन में वाफ गवर्नमेंट खुदाई खिदमतगार के थे तो फिर रिप्रेंड हम की मतलब अगर वो वो करते मतलब इनकार करते कि हम रिप्रेंड हम नहीं करते हाँ तो फिर मतलब रिप्रेंड हम की क्या ज़रूरत है थैंक यू सो मच ठीक है ये जो आप कोरम से हैं ना द द एरिया ऑफ कोरम वाज गिवन टू ब्रिटिश इंडियन गवर्नमेंट अंडर द ट्रीटी ऑफ गंदमक आपका इलाका डिवरेंट लाइन से बहुत पहले जो है एट वाज इन सेवन एटीन सेवनटी नाइन ये अफगानिस्तान ने जो है वो ब्रिटिश इंडिया के कुरम और इसी तरह पशीन और ये सिब्बी इट वॉज गेवन टू द ब्रिटिश एम्पायर अंडर द ट्रिटी ऑफ गंदमक नाउ यू आर पार्शली राइट दैट अब्दुल गफार खान इंस्टेड यू नो ऑफ एनी अलायंस विद एनी पोलिटिकल पार्टी in afghanistan he made alliance with the indian national congress you know to protect the interest of the pakhtuns and to you know uh, uh, provide a, a respectable political position to them in the uh, british indian empire all these arrangements were made you go through uh, the treaty of gandamak you tr you go through the treaty of peshawar of 1855 and then the treaty of uh, the uh, different line in 1893 iske baad ye jitne bhi afghanistan ke umarat the to un logon ne in muahido ke baad british government se bahut zyada imdad bhi wasool kiya kabhi 12 lakh kabhi jo hai wo 6 lakh kabhi military hardware kabhi food grain to afghanistan ka agar ye claim hai ke ye अमीर अब्दुलरहमान वेलिंग नहीं था एंड ही वॉज फोर्स टू साइन दिस एग्रीमेंट तो कॉमन सेंस तो यही है अगर मेरे प्लाट पर कोई कब्जा करता है और वो मुझे कोई कोई थोड़ी सी अमाउंट देता है कभी इसको छोड़ दो तो मैं मतलब एग्री लोग समझेंगे कि आप जो है वो एग्री हो गए अगर मैं जो है वो रिफ्यूज करूँ कि भाई अगर मेरे पास ताकत आ जाती है तो फिर हम देखेंगे तो अफगानिस्तान ऑलवेज received hectic amount afghanistan uh, uh, always uh, was given uh, 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 military assistance and uh, food grain in return of all these uh, uh, agreements then your last question is about the referendum and i uh, discussed it that abdul ghafar khan he also mentioned in his book the ma jun aw jaddu jahid ke what was uh, you know uh, the need of the referendum when there was already a provincial assembly a working provincial assembly was there and this right was given to other provinces of british india of punjab and uh, bengal 
but why this right was denied to the assembly of former NWFP. This, this is true and they should have given this right uh, to the uh, provincial assembly and I told you also that at that time radical uh, transformation took place. People, they uh, now came and sat into the bandwagon of All India Muslim League. The idea of Pakistan was popularized and when Lord Mountbatten, he himself visited NWFP, he uh, witnessed, you know, charged people who were supporting the idea of Pakistan. So he deemed it fit to, you know, uh, uh, hold referendum in NWFP. That's why uh, uh, a referendum was held and uh, all these uh, 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 political parties boycotted. Or us waqt khudai khidmatgar ki hukumat nahi thi, Congress ki hukumat thi. Lekin khudai khidmatgar, it was the allies of Indian National Congress. Without khudai khidmatgar support, Congress was not in the position to form ministry even after 1937 and 1946. It was after their alliance that they were able uh, uh, to form ministry. Lekin uh, uh, uske baad jo hai jo radical transformation, to why is Rai, Mir Khal me uske zehin me yeita, ke chunke is transformation ki waja se muje referendum ki taraf jana parega. Referendum was held, and if uh, uh, the Congress leadership was deke ab ek or point ki taraf me aplo ki tawajo jehebo dilana chata. Why Congress accepted referendum? I am not talking about Frontier Congress. I am talking about the, the, the leadership of Indian National Congress. Why uh, Gandhi, Nehru, Sardar, Vullabhai Patel, they accepted, why, why they, they accepted this arrangement? So to me, Abdul Ghaffar Khan was deceived by the Congress, not by the British government. And when, when he was encouraged to demand Pakhtunistan, this was also not acceptable to the Congress leadership itself. Why is Raya Nekaha ke agar hum Pukhtunistan isme insert karte hai, to pir sik they will claim ke acha aap logo to Pukhtunistan banana chate hai, sik ko ki bhi ek history hai, Ranjit Singh he established Sikh empire, pir Bengali they will come up with the same, aur ye pir ek Pandora box jo hai, wo kul jaye ga. To even Indian National Congress, All India Muslim League and British government, they were on the same page. Why Congress leadership failed to convince Abdul Ghaffar Khan? Why they failed to discuss beforehand this arrangement with Abdul Ghaffar Khan? It was during the working committee meeting that he was informed. To per the famous words of Abdul Ghaffar Khan, ke aap logo ne to hame, जो है वो आगे डाल दिया तो यानी उसके साथ इस पॉइंट को डिस्कस ही नहीं किया किया था ना गांधी ने ना नेहरू ने ना किसी और कांग्रेस के लीडर ने ही वाज केप्ट इन द डार्क दैट वाज अ शॉक न्यूज़ फॉर अब्दुल गफार खान अगर कभी उसको पहले पता चलता इस पूरे अरेंजमेंट का तो हो सकता है वो भी अपना कोई ज़हन तैयार कर लेता कि मुझे अब क्या करना चाहिए लेकिन आखिर में he uh, uh, was shocked and uh, uh, under these circumstances he convened a meeting of uh, the like-minded politician and it was in Banu that he demanded independent Pakhtunistan state. However, he then, you know, uh, uh, it was not only Abdul Ghaffar Khan that he transformed his uh, political ideas after 1947. Many other leaders they were, they were Congress allies and then they became, they accepted partition plan. You know about the ideas of Maulana Maududi. You know about the ideas of Mia Iftiharuddin and many other place, uh, people, then they adjusted themselves with the new realities. Abdul Ghaffar Khan, he was a visionary leader. That's why he then, uh, 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 he, he, he then uh, delivered in the Constituent Assembly a speech and he accepted Pakistan. And he also said that it is our shared responsibility 
to develop Pakistan. That's why then he established Pakistan People's Party, then National Awami Party. Uh, <clears throat> this is true that the establishment of Pakistan did not treat all these people, you know, uh, well, whether uh, uh, he was Jim Sayyid, Abdul Samad Achakze, or Abdul Ghaffar Khan, because they were popular leader. They were not ordinary people. They were not, you know, uh, like uh, only you have, uh, 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 political elites. They were popular leaders, and they, 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 their movement have roots, you know, in the public. What, what Kayum Khan did with the Khudai Khidmatgars, unko nanga karke jo hai wo unki bezatiya karna, unki jedado ko confiscate karna. So this was a matter of survival for Abdul Kayum Khan and, you know, uh, the, the uh, leadership of Pakistan Muslim League, they, they, they shut their eyes. Ji. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum sir. Uh, yeah. sir, uh, my question here is that you have perspective discussed here, don't you think this is a colonial uh, perspective? Now, here, the uh, colonies in uh, the world have been made European, they have been made on a moral base that the white man burden is on us. We are culturally and technologically superior to the other. And the Durand Line Agreement was made by colonizers and native people. ये कोई इंडियन रूलर्स की ट्रीटी नहीं थी अफगानियों के साथ तो अगर जो कॉलोनाइजर थे वो यहां से चले गए तो फिर उनकी जो ट्रीटीज है उनकी क्या लीगल हैसियत रह जाती है जब उनकी अपनी लेजिटिमेट रूल यहां पे नहीं था जस्ट एक मोरल बेस पे थे कोई लीगल बेस उनके पास नहीं थी यहां पर कॉलोनीज बनाने के लिए ये मेरा पहला क्वेश्चन है और दूसरा ये है कि हम ड्यूरेंट लाइन को सिर्फ एक लाइन के तौर पर डिस्कस करते हैं चाहे वो पाकिस्तान में हो चाहे वो अफगानिस्तान वाली साइड हो लेकिन हम इस चीज को नहीं देखते कि ड्यूरेंट लाइन का जो इंपैक्ट है पाकिस्तान के जो पश्तून बेल्ट है उन लोगों पर वो कितना सीवियर है कभी इस पर्सपेक्टिव से हमने ड्यूरेंट लाइन को पढ़ा नहीं है जो जितनी भी तालिबानाइजेशन हुई है जो रेडिकल इस्लामाइजेशन हुई है यहां पर ये डोंट यू थिंक कि ये सारे ड्यूरेंट लाइन के सम्राट है जो हम अभी तक काट रहे हैं अबाउट योर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वाइट्स मैन बर्डन थ्योरी तो कालून जो इस्तेमाल एक हुआ थे हैं वो तो हर जगह पे यही करते हैं वो तो एक एक किस्म की जो है वो मार्ल ग्राउंड तलाश करते हैं एंड द ब्रिटिश आल्सो डिड इट uh, uh, in their British Indian Empire that uh, this is the responsibility of white men to, to civilize uh, uh, the Indians. However, this is untrue that we were uncivilized. We were civilized people, uh, uh, there, you know, before the occupation of British East India Company, India was a golden sparrow and India during Mughal Empire contributed 23.5% uh, uh, GDP. यानी एक चौथाई आप ग्लोबल जीडीपी कंट्रीब्यूट करते हैं फाइनेंशियली यू आर सच अ स्ट्रांग कंट्री यू आर यू आर एस्टैब्लिशिंग न्यू सिटीज शाहजहां एस्टैब्लिश्ड दिल्ली एंड तख्त ताउस एंड ऑल दीस ये ताज महल सो व्हाट इट इंडिकेट दैट फाइनेंशियली इट वाज वेरी स्ट्रांग एंपायर एंड द स्मॉलेस्ट यूनिट वाज सेल्फ सफिशिएंट village was self-sufficient at that time in, you know, uh, all arrangement. It was due to the looting and plundering of the British East India Company that he, we have been deprived of our richness, of our wealth. Pehle uh, 1739 uh, Nadar Shah Afshar ne, jo wo le gaya. Aur pir Ahmad Shah Abdali ne, jo bacha kucha, aur pir uh, uh, the British East India Company, when, when it occupied uh, Indian subcontinent. And if you go through uh, Sashi Taror book, The Air of Darkness, he uh, uh, mentioned all these things in uh, detail. So, this is white man's burden. That is why we have to say that 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 we have to
ہم سے اپنے اپنا اسٹیٹ اس نے ہم سے چین لیا سیاست پہ بھی ان لوگوں نے قبضہ کیا اور اسی طرح ریاست پہ ان لوگوں نے قبضہ کیا ہمارے معاملات پہ قبضہ کیا لیکن ساتھ میں دے آلسو پرووائڈیڈ اے فریم ورک آف نالج اے فریم ورک آف ہسٹری تو ہمیں چاہیے کہ اس فریم ورک کو جو ہے اب تھوڑا سا چینج کرے انڈیا میں کتنا جو ہے وہ فریم ورک کتنے فریم ورک ہر سال جو ہے مختلف فریم ورک جو ہے وہ آ رہے ہیں ہسٹری میں بھی انتھروپالوجی میں بھی اور ہم جب کوٹ کرتے ہیں تو اولف کیرو کوٹ کرتے ہیں ایچ ڈبلیو بلیو کوٹ کرتے ہیں رجوے کوٹ کرتے ہیں اور ہم سمجھتے ہیں کہ دیز آر اتھینٹک سورسز اور آپ کو میں بتا دوں کہ دے ور ناٹ اسکالرس دے ور ناٹ ہسٹورینس دے ور ایڈمنسٹریٹر سم آف دم ور کیپٹنس ان دا آرمی سم آف دم ور کمشنر سم تو ایک تو یہ ہے کہ یہ جو وائٹ مینس برڈن تھیوری ہے یہ نہیں صرف انڈیا میں نہیں تھا یہ ہر جگہ پہ تھا اینڈ دس واز ناٹ اے کریکٹ پریپوزیشن کہ یہ ان کی جو ہے وہ ذمہ داری تھی کہ ہمیں آ کے وہ سولائز کرے انڈیا واز انڈر مغل اٹ واز اے ویری ڈیولپڈ کنٹری ہمارے ہاں نالج بھی تھا لیکن انگلش سسٹم آف ایجوکیشن نہیں تھا پرشین عربک آپ لٹریچر پڑھ لیں یہ تو بالکل ایک رچ کنٹری تھا اسٹرانومی اسٹرالوجی ہندو کو بنیا کیوں کہتے ہیں دے ور فار سپیریئر ان اکنامکس ان میتھمیٹکس بٹ ان پرشین ان سنسکرت ان عربک اینڈ ان ورنیکولر لینگویجز اینڈ وین دے امپلیمنٹیڈ انگلش سسٹم آف ایجوکیشن دین آل دوز پیپل ہو ور یو نو اسکالرز آف پرشین اسکالرز آف سنسکرت دے بیکیم اے لٹریٹ تو انگلش نے تو ہمیں یہ سارا کچھ دے دیا اب نہیں کر رہے تھے یہ لوگ یہاں پہ لیجیٹیمیٹلی نہیں تھے تو ان کی دیکھیں دے ور کالونیل اینڈ کالونیل جو استعمار تھا وہ صرف ساؤتھ ایشیا میں نہیں تھا وہ سینٹرل ایشیا میں بھی تھا وہ آپ کا میں نے پہلے بھی آپ کو وہ مڈل ایسٹ میں بھی تھا اور وہ افریقہ میں بھی تھا ڈز اٹ مین کہ وہ ہر جگہ تھے تو یہ لیجیٹیمیٹ ہو گئی دیز کالونیل پاورز دے اسٹیبلش این انٹرنیشنل آرڈر اینڈ دیٹ انٹرنیشنل آرڈر آفٹر سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار واز پروٹیکٹڈ انڈر انٹرنیشنل لاز انڈر ویانا کنوینشن انڈر یونائٹیڈ نیشن آرگنائزیشن ایف یو آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈسٹربنگ دس انٹرنیشنل لا اٹ ول کریٹ مور پینڈورا باکسز اٹ ول ناٹ سرو یو نو فار 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 دا اسمالر نیشنز اٹ ول اٹ ول بی لائک اے پینڈورا باکس اینڈ یو نو دیر آر ڈزنز آف ایگزامپلس ان دس ورلڈ when colonial uh, uh, powers they divided small communities agar mexico ab ye claim kare ke jo southern mexico hai jo united state ka ek state hai ke ye mera hai aur dusre jo southern riyasate hai ye to america ne baqaida unke sath jang karke ye ilaqe hasil kiye the agar wo claim kare to phir انٹرنیشنل جو ایک آرڈر ہے وہ ڈسٹرب ہو جائے گا میں صرف اپنی ریجن کی بات کروں گا ڈیورن لائن اگر افغانستان کا یہ کلیم ہم مان بھی لے چرے آن ایتھنک لینگویسٹک گراؤنڈ تو کیا افغانستان اس بات کے لیے تیار ہے کہ جو سینٹرل ایشین اسٹیٹ کے ساتھ کمیونٹیز ڈیوائڈ ہے ترکمن ازبک اور تاجک کیا وہ وہ واپس علاقے ان سینٹرل ایشین اسٹیٹس کو دیں گے اور یہ سینٹرل ایشین اسٹیٹ بھی کسی پوائنٹ پہ یہ کلیم کر سکتے ہیں افغانستان سے کہ اگر آپ کہتے ہیں کہ انیس سو سینتالیس میں آفٹر دا ودرال آف برٹش امپائر دس ارینجمنٹ واز ٹرمینیٹڈ دن ایکولی آفٹر دا اینڈ آف دا ریسٹ ریشیا اینڈ آفٹر دا اینڈ آف یو ایس ایس آر آل ارینجمنٹ بٹوین افغانستان اینڈ دا ریسٹ ریشیا اینڈ سوویت یونین از نو مور انٹیکٹ سو واٹ ول ہیپن تو یہ تو اور ایران کے ساتھ آپ دیکھ لیں ایران کے ساتھ بلوچ وہ ڈیوائڈ ہے ایران کے ساتھ ہزارہ وہ ڈیوائڈ ہے تو یہ تو پھر مسئلے اور کریٹ ہوں گے بجائے کہ آپ ایک مسئلے کو حل کریں افغانستان کو افغانستان کا میپ اگر آپ دیکھ لیں نا تو اس کے لیے تو 
uh, I don't know uh, 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 what is running in the minds of their intellectual, lekin Devran line ka jo mutanazia uh, 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 aspect hai ye khud us state ke liye masail peda kar sakte hai. Aur jo civilized nation hote hai, jo tarakiyafta aqwam hote hai, wo is kisam ke controversies ko pher table talk aur muzakirat se hal karte hai. What France and Germany did Alsace Lorraine aur isi tarah Mexico ko aap dekh le kabhi jo hai wo Francisi Germany pe yalgar karte the to kabhi Germany jo hai wo France pe hamle kiya karte the ab agar hum is kabil nahi hai ki bhai is masale ko hal kare to phir mere khayal mein hamare humse jo hai wo zyada naqabil log nahi honge mera apna jo jo ek nuqtai nazar hai wo ye hai ke this should be declared a soft border between the two states and kyunki communities divide ho gaye hain ye visa free jo hai wo zone declare kare devran line ko intact rakhe isko disturb na kare ye aur bhi masail jo hai wo peda kar sakte hain albatta kyunki dono taraf pakhtoon rehte hain baloch rehte hain to aap jo hai wo terrorism ko hal kare is masale ke baad jo hai jo devran line hai isko bahut sare european mamalik mein jo hai wo soft border hai aur unke liye jo hai wo visa visa ki koi zarurat nahi hai lekin hamare yahan kyunki bahut zyada masle masail hai terrorism bhi hai iske liye yani iske liye hame jo hamare nationalist forces hai afghanistan mein bhi pakistan mein bhi khyber pakhtunkhwa aur ye balochistan mein bhi even our establishment should seriously think over it ke isko soft border declare kare bhai kitne jo hai wo tourist spot hai is ilake mein ab main nahi ja sakta main kabhi jab gaya tha to ye ilake jo hai there are jo hai mineral there are tourist spot ab wazirstan mein dekh le ab jo hai wo deer aur swat aur ye hamare liye jo hai wo bahut zyada ye tourism ke hawale se pakistan ko aage ye ilake le ja sakenge लेकिन हमारी जो है वो एस्टेब्लिशमेंट क्या सोचती है आई डोंट नो सवाल मेरा इसी के साथ है जो अभी आपने जिक्र किया है कि इसको डिक्लेयर किया जाए क्योंकि कम्युनिटीज डिवाइड हो गई हैं दोनों साइड्स पे जी एक तो सर मैं एक दफा देख रहा था क्योंकि ये इशू बार बार उठता रहता है ये रोड लाइन का تو رحیم اللہ یوسف زئی صاحب کو میں سن رہا تھا اور ڈاکٹر عظمت صاحب تھے غالباً پشاور ایریا سٹڈی سینٹر کے چیئرمین تھے وہ ایک افغان گورنمنٹ کو یا شاہ کو کوٹ کر رہے تھے کہ انہوں نے ایک لیٹر لکھا تھا بریٹش گورنمنٹ کو کہ ڈریوڈ لائن سے اس سائٹ کے پشتونوں کے ساتھ افغانستان کا کوئی تعلق نہیں ہے ایک تو اس میں سر آپ سے گائیڈنس چاہ رہا تھا کہ اس میں کتنی حقیقت ہے اور دوسری بات یہ سر کہ ہم پاکستان کا ذکر تو کر رہے ہیں پاکستانی نیشنلسٹوں کا بھی پاکستان کا بھی افغانستان میں اس لکیر کو کس طرح سے دیکھا جاتا ہے خاص کر جو افغانستان کی عوام ہیں وہ اس کو کتنا سیریس لیتے ہیں ابھی آپ نے نیگوسییشنز کی بات کی تو نیگوسییشنز کے لیے تو میرے خیال سے کوئی سیریس ایفرٹ سوئی بھی نہیں ہے ممکن ہے یا نہیں لیکن اینی ہاو افغانستان میں ڈریوڈ لائن کو کتنا سیریس لیا جاتا ہے کتنا کنسسٹنٹ رائے افغان گورنمنٹ کا ڈیفرنٹ گورنمنٹ ظاہر بات ہے آج کل تو ہماری اپنی حکومت وہاں پہ آئی ہوئی ہے لیکن وہ بھی ایک سخت سٹینڈ لے رہی ہے ڈریوڈ لائن کے حوالے سے اور سر تیسری بات جو ایک باچا خان کے حوالے سے چونکہ بار بار باچا خان کا ذکر ہوا یہ آخر میں سر جو ان پہ ان کے جو حالانکہ میں تو اس کو کوئی غلط نہیں سمجھتا ان کے ایک ذاتی وہ تھا اور میں خود بھی اس کے حق میں ہوں کہ ان کو دفن ہونا چاہیے تھا جلال آباد میں لیکن یہ جو انہوں نے فیصلہ کیا تھا اس کو بھی اس چیز کے ساتھ کوئی لنک کرتے ہیں ڈریوڈ لائن کے ساتھ کہ میں اس ملک میں دفن نہیں ہونا چاہتا میں جلال آباد میں دفن ہونا چاہتا ہوں سر اس حوالے سے بھی تھوڑا سا گائیڈ کریں اچھا آپ کی جو ہے وہ ابزرویشن بھی ہے اور تین میرے خیال میں کوئیسٹن بھی ہے تو سب سے پہلے کہ افغانستان کے لوگوں کا یا افغانستان کے I uh, uh, frankly speaking I don't know about such a letter 
uh, and uh, I went through Azmat Hayat book. Uh, he has not mentioned any uh, thing uh, ab about that uh, uh, letter. So, different line, Pabi recently a kitab bhi aayi hai Lutfullah, Dr. Lutfullah ne liki hai. Aur iska title mere khayal mein yehi title hai uska. So, this is like uh, uh, the new research based book. He uh, uh, inaugurated this book uh, in Kaidiyazam University. Isi tarah Azmat Hayat sahab ne bhi is pe leka hai. Bohut sare Indian ne bhi is hawale se leka hai. Sultan Rum sahab ne bhi uh, is pe kaam kiya hai. To uh, in sab को जो है थोड़ा बहुत मैंने जो पढ़ा है तो मुझे इस हवाले से जो है वो जिक्र नहीं मिलता अलबत्त अफगानिस्तान के लोगों का अफगानिस्तान के इंटेलेक्चुअल्स का या अफगानिस्तान के सियासतदानों का इस हवाले से जो स्ट्रांस है दे आर अनकंप्रोमाइजिंग दे आर इमोशनली अटैच्ड विद दिस डिफरेंट लाइन एंड विदाउट एनी कंक्रीट एविडेंस फ्रेंकली स्पीकिंग वंस आई वाज वाचिंग अ टॉक शो ये अशरफ गनी के दौर में मैं एक टॉक शो देख देख रहा था और एग्जैक्टली इट वाज ऑन डेवरन लाइन इशू तो वो एक इंटेलेक्चुअल उसने बुलाया था उस टॉक शो में और ये जो हमारा पख्तून एक सहाफ़ी है क्या नाम है उसका मर्दान का सलीम साफ़ी नहीं ये दूसरा जो हसन हसन खान ही वॉज आल्सो देर तो ये मुख्तलफ दलाइल के साथ आ रहे थे तो वो हसन खान ने उस अफगान इंटेलेक्चुअल से कहा कि चले आप इस बात पर तो राज़ी हो जाए ना कि अगर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान यहाँ पर रेफरेंडम करे दोबारा तो आपको वो फैसला कबूल होगा तो उस अफगान इंटेलेक्चुअल ने कहा कि नहीं अभी तो लोग जो है वो नहीं चाहेंगे कि हम अफगानिस्तान के साथ जो है वो अलहाक करें या हम जो है अफगानिस्तान में जाके बस जाए तो फिर उसने कहा कि जब लोग नहीं चाहेंगे तो फिर आप क्यों क्लेम करते हैं उसने कहा कि मुझे वहाँ के लोगों से कोई लेना देना नहीं है मुझे उधर के पुख्तूनों से कोई लेना देना नहीं है वो अटक अटक के पार चले जाए मुझे अपने इलाके से जो है वो गरज है तो उनका तो एक इमोशनल और जज्बाती जो है वो ये जो सारा मैंने आप लोगों के सामने रख दिया वो तो इस बात को मानने के लिए तैयार भी नहीं है लेकिन जब वो एविडेंस जिस जिन जिन आर्गूमेंट्स के साथ वो आते हैं वो तो मेरे ख्याल में इतने कमज़ोर है कि इसी वजह है इसी वजह से वो ना इंटरनेशनल कोर्ट ऑफ जस्टिस में जा सकते हैं न वो यूनाइटेड नेशन में इस इशू को ले जा सकते हैं और न किसी और इंटरनेशनल फोरम पे जा सकते हैं इंटरेस्टिंगली और राइवल नेबर इंडिया इज आल्सो रिकॉग्नाइजिंग डिवरन लाइन इज इंटरनेशनल बाउंड्री बिटवीन अफगानिस्तान एंड पाकिस्तान बिकॉज इफ इंडिया Also, uh, uh, claim that this is not a valid, a valid frontier between the two countries. फिर उसके लिए भी मसाइल पैदा हो सकते हैं तो इस वजह से कोई भी मल्क अफगानिस्तान के इस क्लेम को एक्सेप्ट करने के लिए तैयार नहीं है लेकिन मैं आपके साथ ये शेयर करूँ कि द पीपल ऑफ अफगानिस्तान और ये चूंकि इंटेलिजेंसिया सियासतदान और मीडिया दे मेड सच एंड इमोशनल यू नो फॉरवर्ड इन अफगानिस्तान के ऑल द पीपल दे आर नाउ इमोशनली अटैच विद द डिवरेंट लाइन वो इस पर आपके साथ जो है वो बात नहीं करते यानी वो आपके साथ डिबेट भी नहीं करते जी जी वाले सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये डिवरेंट लाइन के हिस्टोरिकल पॉलिटिकल उसमें तीनों परस्पेक्टिव ही आ जाते हैं और उसमें अगर ये इंटरनेशनल एक ट्रीटी हुई है और इंडिया ने भी इसको रिकोगनाइज किया है पाकिस्तान भी इसको कहते हैं और बाकी दुनिया में भी ये अगर एक इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर है तो फिर पाकिस्तान को क्यों बार बार ज़रूरत पड़ती है चाहे वो मुशरफ के गवर्नमेंट में हो या पीपल्स पार्टी के गवर्नमेंट में हो या नून लीग के दौर में हो या अभी जो तालिबान आए हैं या 
प्रीवियस जो तालिबान का गवर्नमेंट था तो वो बार बार ये ट्राई करते हैं कि उनसे ये रिकोगनाइज कर ले और उनसे एक प्रॉपर एग्रीमेंट ले ले तो अगर हम ये ऑलरेडी एक इंटरनेशनल ट्रीटी हुई है उसके थ्रू ये एक इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर बन गया है तो पाकिस्तान फिर बार बार इन चीज़ों में क्यों मतलब वो क्यों ये ट्राई कर रहे हैं कि इसको एक रिकोगनीशन मिल जाए और प्रॉपर इंटरनेशनल वो एग्रीमेंट हो जाए ताकि ये इशू सॉल्व हों क्योंकि अफगानिस्तान और दूसरा क्वेश्चन सर मेरा ये कि यहाँ से तो नेशनलिस्ट लीडर जो है चाहे वो खैबर पश्तूखा में है या बलूचस्तान के पश्तून बेल्ट में जो नेशनलिस्ट लीडर्स हैं वो अक्सर इस इशू को उठाते हैं और उनको एक पॉलिटिकल स्लोगन के तौर पे भी वो करते हैं और फिर उसके साथ उनके वेलिड आर्गूमेंट्स भी होते हैं लेकिन अफगानिस्तान में इस सच कोई प्रॉपर नेशनलिस्ट पोलिटिकल पोर्स जिसने डिवरेंट लाइन को उस पर कोई पॉलिटिक्स की हो और उसके उसके सपोर्ट में कोई आर्गूमेंट वगैरह दिया हो या प्रॉपर एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हो जो इसके लिए कोई वर्क कर रहा हो जी अच्छा तो पाकिस्तान को क्यों बार बार ज़रूरत पड़ती है ये इसलिए ज़रूरत पड़ती है मेरे ख्याल में कि चूँकि अफगानिस्तान के पॉलिटिशन अफगानिस्तान के हुक्मरान इस किस्म के स्टेटमेंट्स टाइम बाई टाइम वो दे देते हैं कि जिससे ये तनाज़ दोबारा जो है वो उठ कड़ा हो जाता है अफगानिस्तान नेवर एक्सेप्टेड ऑफिशियली डेवर लाइन एज इंटरनेशनल बार्डर बिटवीन द टू कंट्रीज एंड दिस इज द विश ऑफ पाकिस्तान दैट अफगानिस्तान शुड एक्सेप्ट दिस एज इंटरनेशनल बार्डर लेकिन उन्नीस सौ सैंतालीस के बाद किसी भी अफगान हुक्मरान किसी भी जो है वो डायनेस्टी ने इसको ऑफिशियली रिकोगनाइज नहीं किया है एंड ड्यूरिंग जुल्फिकारली बट टू टाइम पीरियड विन सरदार दाऊद ही वॉज द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ अफगानिस्तान तो uh, ये uh, कुछ उम्मीद पैदा हो गई थी कि नगोसिएशन uh, दोनों ममालिक के बीच में स्टार्ट हो जाएंगे एंड सरदार दाऊद ही डेमोस्ट्रेटेड हेज वेलिंगनेस टू स्टार्ट नगोसिएशन ऑन दिस वेरी इशू हाव एवर the russian invasion of afghanistan and the 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 the, the murder of sardar daud it you know uh, buried uh, those uh, expectation and sardar daud he was more than a pakhtun nationalist when he uh, uh, captured the throne uh, uh, it was during this uh, his time period that pakhtunistan movement was started ajmal khatak he switched over to afghanistan and he started pakistan movement sardar daud provided him shelter uh, military uh, uh, training grounds weapons and many people they went to afghanistan and they uh, joined pakistan movement but what zulfikar ali bhutto did in return he invited all the jihadi elements abdul rasul siyaf uh, gulbadin hikmatyar all these people they were given shelter and red carpet protocol in rawal pindi so this process was started uh, during uh, but two days but after some time sardar daud he realized his blunder then he you know he uh, uh, imposed restriction on the movement of pashtun nationalist in afghanistan and after ziaul haq marshallah all these people then they returned to uh, pakistan even ajmal khatak ziaul haq also uh, uh, finished he you know uh, hyderabad tribunal jo battu ne banaya tha aur sare ye hamare opposition leader uh, uh, they were implicated uh, in uh, uh, treason cases to is wajah se uh, uh, wo negotiation nahi hue pakistan to chahta yahi hai ki koi aisi jo hai dynasty ya hukmran aa jaye jiske sath hum बात भी करे और इसको एक बाबा शक्ल भी दे दे लेकिन अभी तक पाकिस्तान इस अपने मंसूबे में वो कामयाब नहीं हुआ मेरे ख्याल में कि आप अपने हमसाये को जो है वो तब्दील नहीं कर सकते और अगर हम अच्छे हमसायों की तरह रहना चाहते हैं तो ये जो हमारे बीच में इश्यूज हैं ये बहरहाल हल हल करने पड़ेंगे हमें हल की तरफ जाना पड़ेगा और ये गेव एंड टेक टेबल टॉक और निगोसिएशन के बगैर नहीं होंगे एक एक पब्लिक नेरेटिव होता है एक होता है एकेडमिक नेरेटिव तो वट इज वट आर एविडेंसेज विद अफगानिस्तान एंड वट एविडेंसेज एंड आर्गूमेंट्स पाकिस्तान यू नो प्रजेंट 
ان دوز مذاکرات اور ان دوز نیگوسیشن تو یہ یہ تو ٹیبل ٹاک پہ اور ہمیں اس مسئلے پہ لوگوں کو جذباتی کرنے کی بالکل ضرورت نہیں ہے کیونکہ یہ بڑے مسائل ہیں اور اس کو بہرحال جو ہے وہ اور اس سے گمبیر مسائل یہ مختلف ممالک نے حل کیے ہیں جس پہ ہزاروں کی تعداد میں جو ہے وہ لوگ مرے ہیں لیکن آخر میں ان لوگوں نے یہ جو بڑے بڑے مسائل ہیں بارڈرز کے وہ حل کیے مطلب ہمارے انڈیا کے ساتھ اگر مسئلہ ہے کشمیر پہ چائنا کے ساتھ تو ماشاء اللہ کچھ بھی نہیں ہے تو وہ بھی جو ہے وہ ہمیں ایک حل کی طرف جو ہے وہ جانا پڑے گا کیونکہ یہ ہمیشہ ہم انہی مسئلوں کے ساتھ تو نہیں رہیں گے جی دا لاسٹ کوشچن اچھا سر لوگ ایسے نہ ناراض ہو جائے کہ ایک تو لاسٹ کوشچن ہے اور یہ زیادہ بول رہے سر سو گڈ ایوننگ ایوری ون تھینک یو سو مچ سر آئی ایم عصمت بیسیکلی فرام زوب جنوبی پختونخوا اور پشتونخوا اس سیم سو سر ایک چیز کلیئر کرنا چاہوں گا اس کے بعد کوشچن پوچھوں گا سر دیٹ از ان لاسٹ یو مینشن دیٹ نن آف دی پولیٹیکل پارٹی اور مائی فرینڈس نیشنلسٹ سو دی آر کلیئر اباؤٹ دیئر اسٹانس اباؤٹ دی پشتونستان سو بینگ اے ریپرزینٹیو آف پشتونخوا ملی ایم پارٹی اوور ہیئر آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو کلیئر دس پوائنٹ اوور ہیئر دیٹ پشتونخوا ملی ایم پارٹی از کلیئر اباؤٹ دس تھنگ دیٹ دے ڈیمانڈ فار دی پشتونستان اے پروونس ود ان پاکستان ویئر دیئر رائس آر ریزرو سو آئی ووڈ لائک آئی واز ہیئر ٹو مینشن دس اینڈ دا کوشچن اوور ہیئر از سر دیٹ ہاؤ ووڈ یو ریسپونڈ ٹو دی لیگل امپلیمنٹیشن آف پاسپورٹ آن دی ڈیورن دی چمن بارڈر اینڈ دی سٹن دی چمن سٹن وچ مارک ون ہنڈریڈ اینڈ فورٹی سیکنڈ ٹوڈے سو دیٹ واز مائی کوشچن تھینک یو سر اوکے Thank you for your observation and clarification that Pakhtunkhwa Milli Awami Party retained a clear stance on Devran Lion issue and they are demanding a bigger province uh, of, you know, Pakhtunkhwa within the constitutional framework of Pakistan. But uh, 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 as far as your question of uh, the passport and Chaman border are, uh, you know, Lundi Kotal Torham border, To me, there is no need of passport. Or, I am going to say my personal observation or personal experience on the basis of this, that I will propose to my government to propose that you, as many of these are Afghan brothers, give them a chance of citizenship. Many Afghans who are living here, who are living here, I myself, ایسے افغانوں کو جانتا ہوں دے آر کنٹریبیوٹنگ مچ ٹو دا فائنانس آف پاکستان ان کے بڑے بڑے بزنسز ہیں یہاں پہ اور میں خود ایسے لوگوں کو جانتا ہوں کہ ان کے بزنسز میں درجنوں پاکستانی کام کرتے ہیں تو ہم یورپ جا کے ایک دو سالوں میں ہم سٹیزن شپ لے لیتے ہیں اور ہمارے یہ افغانی بھائی یہ کنٹریبیوٹ بھی کرتے ہیں پاکستان میں وہ خدمت بھی کرتے ہیں تو وائی ناٹ ٹو گیو دم لیگل اسٹیٹس کچھ ایسے کیسز بھی ہے کہ کچھ افغانیوں نے یہاں پہ شادیاں کی ہے ان کی بیویاں پاکستانی ہیں اور کچھ ایسے کیسز بھی ہے کہ جو ہے وہ کچھ جو ہمارے پاکستانی لوگ ہیں ان لوگوں نے جو ہے وہ افغانی خاندانوں میں شادیاں کی ہیں تو ان کو شناختی کارڈ نہیں مل رہے ہیں ان کو لیگل اسٹیٹس نہیں مل رہا ہے اور ان کو بات بات پہ جو ہے وہ لوگ تنگ کرتے ہیں یو نو اباؤٹ دا ایٹیچیوڈ آف اور لوکل ایڈمنسٹریشن جب ایک کمزوری ان کے ہاتھ میں آ جاتی ہے تو کس طرح پھر وہ لوگوں کو ڈیل کرتے ہیں تو یہ میرے خیال میں کوئی سیاسی مسئلہ اس کو نہیں بنانا چاہیے وہ یہاں پہ تیس پینتیس سالوں سے اگر رہتے ہیں وہ یہاں پہ جو جوان آئے تھے وہ بوڑھے ہو گئے ہیں اور جو پیدا ہوئے تھے وہ جوان ہو گئے تو میرے خیال میں ہمیں اس چیز پہ غور کرنا چاہیے اور ہمیں اس کے لیے کوئی فارمولہ وضع کرنا چاہیے بہرحال کہ کون سے ایسے افغانیوں کو ہم سٹیزن شپ دے دے 
اور کون سے ہم جو ہے وہ اپنے ملک دوبارہ واپس بھیج دیں مطلب یہ سویپنگ اسٹیٹمنٹس کے اب سارے چلے جائے تو یہ ہمارے مسائل اور بھی گمبھیر کر لیں گے اور افغانستان میں اٹ ول کریٹ اٹ ول انکریز ہیٹ ریٹ ان دا مائنڈ ان ان دا ہرٹس آف افغانستان سٹیزن آف افغانستان یہ ایک ہے اور جو بارڈر کے مسائل ہے تو میں نے بتا دیا کہ سافٹ بارڈر ہونا چاہیے ہمیں جو ہے وہ مطلب ود آؤٹ ویزا آپ افغانستان میں جا سکتے ہیں اور اسی طرح ود آؤٹ ویزا آپ جو ہے وہ افغانستان سے یہاں پہ آ سکتے ہیں لیکن چونکہ سیکیورٹی کے مسائل ہے اور کچھ لوگ ایسے ہیں کہ جن کی گھر اس طرف ہے اور بزنس اس طرف ہے اور کچھ ایسے ہیں کہ وہ رہتے افغانستان میں ہیں بلکہ لیکن ان کی زمینیں ان کا ان کی زراعت جو ہے وہ یہاں پہ ہے تو دے آر ناؤ فیسنگ ٹریولس ان دس سیناریو تو اس پہ بہرحال کچھ نہ کچھ ہمیں کرنا چاہیے کیونکہ یہ دونوں ممالک کے لیے میرے خیال میں یہ فائدے کی چیزیں ہیں اگر ہم جو ہے بارڈر کو سخت کرے اور چیکنگ بھی سخت کرے تو ہزاروں کی تعداد میں ایسے لوگ ہیں جن کی روزگار کا مسئلہ ہے اینڈ دے آر انوسینٹ دے آر ناٹ انوالو ان اینی ٹیررسٹ ایکٹیویٹیز بے شک آپ ان کو پکڑ لیں ان کو نہ جانے دے ہو آر کریٹنگ ٹریولس بٹ دوز ہو آر یو نو انوالو ان بزنس ایکٹیویٹیز تو آپ ان کو جو ہے وہ جانے دے اور ان کے لیے بارڈر کو کھول دے تھینک یو سو مچ فار یور ٹائم جی عمیر السلام علیکم سر وعلیکم السلام سر آپ نے تو بہت ڈیٹیل میں بتا دی لیکن سم ہسٹوریکل پیکس جس طرح سعد اللہ جان برگ نے اپنی ایک شاعری میں وہ ہسٹورین بھی تھا لیکن بیسیکلی ہی واز ناٹ اے پختون ہی واز بیسیکلی اس بک بٹ بٹ ہی آلسو سیز ڈیٹ اٹ از دا ظلم پا قانون اینڈ ہسٹوری جیوگرافیکلی یو لنگ سر دا ڈیور آن لائن ایشو ٹوٹلی وتھ جیوگرافی بٹ پختون آر آلسو ان دا Uh, since of their uh, identical crisis. For example, uh, this uh, Sadullah Jan Bark says in his uh, poem that Usyowa ya Afghan yam balwai za patan yam balwai kabail yam asli jabi pukhtun da zulam pa kanun. During 1879, the Treaty of Gandamak was signed. Uh, it was signed between uh, Amir Muhammad Yaqub and Uh, the British Viceroy and you know that sir during that time it is a strategic game just you mm-hmm. mentioned the second Anglo of one war but 1880s there is a battle of Kandahar you know that uh, Sardar Yaqub was replaced by Amir Abdurrahman during Jee. that war so basically sir Amir Abdurrahman was brought for this uh, episode which Jee. is happened in the shape of dural line So again, when we are talking about you, just I'll uh, mention from two or three times that some radical Pukhtuns. So why uh, Ridia Pukhtun are became radical? Because during the 1946 election, it was won by Khudai Khidmatgar, but it is given to Muslim League. So that's why Muslim League are accepting Pakistan as a nation. But Khudai Khidmatgar, then we have seen the episode of Babala incident. So this is sir, my points and... Uh, lastly, that uh, none of the Afghan leaders accept this fact that Dural Line is a legal border because if they accept Dural Line, so what about the LOC, line of uh, control, and what about the line, line of actual control? So uh, I'm a, so being a student of international relations, so some uh, scholar says that international law is a product of liberalism. So state is a product of realism. So there is no importance for the state sovereignty that they recognize uh, border like this, sir. Okay, your first question that Amir Abdurrahman, he was brought for this special treaty by uh, the British Indian Empire uh, uh, to uh, legalize this uh, arrangement. So, uh, Omer, now I will tell you that we will tell you which of the Afghan government لیگل حکمران مان لے افغانستان کے جتنے بھی یعنی میں جنرلائز نہیں کر رہا لیکن میجارٹی آف دا امیر آر دا رولرز آف افغانستان دے ور ان ون وے آر دا ادر براٹ اباؤٹ بائی دا امپیریل پاورز دے ور دن ایلیمنیٹیڈ بائی دا امپیریل پاورز 
آپ ریسنٹ ہسٹری کو دیکھ لیں وٹ دا وٹ دا رائیولز آف سردار داود ڈڈ ود سردار داود پھر حفیظ اللہ امین کے ساتھ کیا ہوا پھر یہ جو ہماری یادوں میں جو ہے وہ پھر طالبان نے ان کے ساتھ کیا کیا ٹھیک ہے ان کو چوک میں جو ہے وہ ابھی تک جو وہ میں پکچر دیکھ رہا ہوں تو یعنی روم کے کڑے ہو جاتے ہیں بندے کی تو کسی اور نے یہ نہیں کیا یہ خود دا پیپل آف افغانستان ریسپانسبل فار دا ڈسٹرکشن آف افغانستان یا جو ابھی ریسنٹلی معاہدہ ہوا قطر میں دوہا میں تو افغانستان کی جو اشرف غنی کی رجیم ہے وہ اس کو ریپرزنٹیٹو حکومت مانتی نہیں ہے تو یہ تقریباً سارے جو افغان عمرات تھے یا رولرس تھے ان کے ساتھ یہ مسئلہ ہے جب برٹش گورنمنٹ کو اس نے آنکھیں دکھائی شاہ شجاہ نے ہی واز ریپلیسڈ اینڈ ہی ٹوک شیلٹر ود رنجیت سنگھ لیکن جب دوست محمد خان نے بھی ان کو آنکھیں دکھائی تو دن ہی واز آلسو شون دا ڈور کہ آپ ہمارے خواہشات پہ پورا نہیں اترتے اینڈ دن امیر عبد الرحمن ہی واز براٹ اینڈ ہی واز ڈکلیئر ایز دا کنگ آف افغانستان تو میرے خیال میں جتنے بھی یہ جو ہے وہ ارینجمنٹ ہوئی ہے ویدر دے ور دا ریئل ریپرزنٹیٹو افغانستان اور ادر وائز ہاف ایور دے دا رولرز آف افغانستان ون یو پیپل کنسیڈر دا رشین انویژن ایز لیگل اینڈ یو آر کمنگ ود دا آرگومنٹ دیٹ دا دن رولر ہی انوائٹیڈ دا رشین فورسز دن مائی کویشچن از دیٹ ویدر ہی واز اے ریپرزنٹیٹو آف دا پیپل آف افغانستان وین ہی انوائٹیڈ رشین فورسز اینڈ دس واز لائک نیکٹ ایگریشن اور نیشنلزم تو امپیریلزم کی زد ہے آپ امپیریل فورسز کو جو ہے وہ افغانستان میں آنے دیتے ہیں کہ آپ آ جائے اور ہمیں جو ہے وہ آپ استحکام دے دے تو یہ تقریباً سارے عمرہ کے ساتھ یہ مسئلہ ہے لیکن افغانستان کے ساتھ جو مسائل ہیں وہ افغانستان کے لوگ خود ہی حل کریں گے اینڈ دس واز یعنی یہ ایک بہت بڑا المیہ تھا کہ افغانستان واز ریٹین اے بفر اسٹیٹ برٹش گورنمنٹ افغانستان یعنی برٹش گورنمنٹ نے جتنے بھی علاقے فتح کیے وہاں ان لوگوں نے جو ہے وہ انسٹیٹیوشن ڈیولپ کیے تو ابھی وہ زیادہ ترقی یافتہ ہے اور جن علاقوں پہ ان لوگوں نے حکمرانی نہیں کی وہ وہاں پہ انسٹیٹیوشن جو ہے وہ ڈیولپمنٹ انفراسٹرکچر ڈیولپمنٹ نہیں ہوئی تو ابھی وہ جو ہے وہ اتنے ترقی یافتہ نہیں ہے افغانستان ریمین یو نو ابفر زون بٹوین رشیا اینڈ برٹش امپائر بوتھ ٹرائڈ ٹو انکریز دیئر انفلوئنس کبھی رشیا نے جو ہے وہ پرشیا کے تھرو ہیرات اور کندہار پہ قبضہ کیا تو کبھی یہاں سے بھی جو ہے وہ فوج برٹش انڈین امپائر نے جو ہے وہ بیچ دیا افغانستان میں کابل پہ قبضہ بھی کیا تو ان ساری جو ڈیولپمنٹ سے افغانستان کی سوسائٹی متاثر ہوئی ان لوگوں نے سکھ کا سانس نہیں لیا اور پھر جو ایک ایلیمنٹ آف تربور ولی ہے کہ یہ بھی جو ہے وہ عظیم خان کے لوگ ان کے خلاف جو ہے وہ سازشیں کرنے لگے یار محمد خان اور سلطان محمد خان وہ آپ سب کو پتہ ہے دے ور سٹنگ ان پیشاور اینڈ ور انوالوڈ ان کنسپیریسیز تو یہ بھی ایک اور پھر جو سدوزے اور بارکزے ان کے بیچ میں بھی جو ہے وہ رائیولری شروع ہو گئی تو میرے خیال میں ہمیں ان چیزوں سے نکلنا ہوگا اور افغانستان چونکہ پاکستان کے ہمسائے پاکستان کو بھی چاہیے کہ افغانستان کی ڈیولپمنٹ میں اپنا کردار ادا کرے اور یہ ٹیررزم کا ایشو ختم کرے ٹیررزم کا ایشو باقی ممالک میں اگر ختم ہو سکتا ہے تو پھر یہاں پہ بھی ہو سکتا ہے تائمل تامل ٹائیگرز اگر سری لنکا میں ختم ہو سکتے ہیں تو میرے خیال میں دے ور مور پاور فل تو یہ بہرحال ہمیں اس پہ ڈیبیٹ کرنا چاہیے اور ڈیبیٹ ہی سے چیزیں جو ہے وہ حل ہو سکتی ہے بہت شکریہ تھینک یو سو مچ